Hey guys, welcome back once again to Reignited. Now in this video, we're going to cover the installation of performance valve springs on the Hemi engine. Now we all know that the Hemi engine doesn't have the greatest reputation for valve springs. I've replaced quite a few over the years that have just broken during the normal course of their use. So this same procedure can be used for replacing just individual valve springs, or like most of you, I'm sure, you want to install some performance valve springs. You want to put a bigger, badder, faster, louder camshaft in your Hemi engine, and that means you want to upgrade the valve train along with it. So something to clarify here, this same exact procedure works for every Hemi engine from 2003 to the current year. So basically it doesn't matter if it's a car, a truck or a Jeep, doesn't matter what it is, the same procedure works for all of those. Let's get into the video guys. Guys, one of the things I love the most about this whole YouTube thing is this interchange of knowledge between you and me. Now, I feel like I have a pretty good sense about these Hemi engines, feel like I know them very well, so I like to try to pass that knowledge on to you guys. However, that by no means means that I think I know absolutely everything about them. I love learning new things, and here's a great example of that. If you remember in the episode where I put the Texas Speed camshaft in there, I mentioned that I did not need to do upgraded valve springs because the 6.4 liters already come with those upgraded springs on there. Now, a viewer named Mike, he contacted me and said, hey, I know that you're using a truck version of the 6.4 liter. That actually just comes with standard 5.7 valve springs on there. The upgraded valve springs for the 6.4 come in both the cars and on the 6.2 of the Hellcats. And that was a shock to me. I did not realize that at all. So I'm very grateful to Mike for bringing that to my attention. So now I've got these upgraded valve springs in here. If you're looking for the part number for those, it is 0503-7382. BC, boy Charlie. Now the point of what I'm trying to show you guys right here is that you can replace the valve springs with the cylinder head still installed on the vehicle. It's not too tricky of a deal. It's a little bit finicky, so it's a little bit tight. You've got to really pay attention. Now, obviously I have much better access here than you will have in your own car or truck. However, I have done this job multiple times in both the cars and the trucks. It can be done. It's Again, it's just a little bit finicky, so just take your time with it and you'll have no problem with it. There are a couple of special tools that are required to do this job though. As far as removal of the valve springs itself, you will need a valve spring removal tool. I have made this one myself. In fact, you'll be able to see that. I'll link the episode right here of when I built this tool in the Chrysler 300C episode. You can watch the whole thing if you want, but really the only part that's of any importance is this right here. <laughs> That hurt a lot. <laughs> yep, I'm an idiot. So you don't have to build this tool yourself. You can go buy them and actually sell this same tool. I'm really happy with the way this one works, so I'm gonna keep using it, but you can just buy the tool itself. So that is one special thing that you will need. Another thing you will need, shop air. You need some form of an air compressor that can maintain consistent air pressure to the cylinder. The next special tool you'll need is some form of a compression tester that works on these engines. Now, the important thing to note here is that these compression testers come with a Schrader valve screwed into the end here. You need to remove that Schrader valve so that shop air can flow smoothly through this and down and fill the cylinder. Now, the last thing you're gonna need that's something of a special tool is some form of a fine pick tool. You'll wanna have something you can manipulate the valve retainers, the valve keepers in there really easily because that's an important step of this whole job. All right, so all that being said, let's get into this job. Now in this tool that I built, you'll notice that the holes are offset in such a way that when you put it on on one side, these line up directly with the valve springs like they're supposed to. But if you tried to put the same deal on the other side, they would no longer line up. All that means is all you gotta do is turn the thing around 180 degrees, they'll all line up. All right, so what you wanna do is you want to remove one spark plug from each cylinder. That way you'll have some place to thread in your compression tester tool to actually add shop air. Now you'll notice I already have the rocker arms off here. So you'll take the valve cover off, you take the rocker arms off. And what that does is that moves all the valves to the closed position as though this cylinder was on top dead center or whatever cylinder you're working on, it's already at top dead center because both the valves are shut. Now the key to this is as soon as you add shop air here, it fills the cylinder with pressurized air. That way, once you remove the valve spring, the valve will not fall down into the cylinder. So very, very important that you have consistent shop air going to this cylinder. If at all the pressure drops inside the cylinder, your valve could actually slide down and then you're in a world of trouble. All right, now you'll hear some air hissing out here, whether it's the intake or exhaust, you'll hear just a little bit. That's totally fine, not a big deal. Now put our tool in place here.
All right. Now, as we tighten that down, what it does is it gives us access to the valve keepers in here. You'll take a magnet of some kind and get your valve keepers out. Now, I highly suggest using a magnet to take them out because these can be very, very slippery and it's very easy to drop them and you do not wanna drop them down into the engine itself, down into the cylinder head. So go ahead and just take those valve keepers out and then as soon as they're out, you can loosen the tool and the valve spring comes right off. With our valve springs here, there's a couple of identifying factors that you can notice. One is that the one on the right is the 6.4 liter uh, valve spring, and you can see that it is physically taller than the other valve spring. The other thing is the coloring. The one on the left, the 5.7, has the pink coloring. The one on the right has the blue coloring. So that's how you know it is a different valve spring overall. Let's get it installed. All right, put your new valve spring on there. Then you put your old retainer. Slip your tool back into place. All right, now is when we're gonna get our valve keepers back into place. Now, this is actually a very important step. What you want to do is you wanna have some sort of assembly gel or lube uh, that is soluble in oil, and you actually coat the inside of the keeper with that gel, and then you slip it in there. Now, what you do is you use your pick tool to actually guide that keeper into place. There's a series of ridges on the valve stem itself that the keeper sits on. And that gel you put on there will actually hold that valve keeper in place, which is incredibly important. There's one. Let's get this other one in place. All right, so those are both in place. Then all you do is you loosen the tool. And just like that, you've replaced your valve spring here. So. I know I made that look pretty straightforward and pretty simple. It is actually fairly finicky. There is a technique to it, but we're gonna do it again on this one and I'll show you more of a close up of what exactly is happening with these valve keepers.
There we go, just like that, we have all 16 of our valve springs replaced with our upgraded valve springs. Very much happier now, I feel comfortable with that. Now we'll go ahead and slap this thing back together. Now, as always, I recommend that if you are doing this job yourself, as soon as you get your rocker arms back on and torqued down, spin the engine over at least three or four cycles. Make sure you see all the rockers actuating correctly. It is very, very easy to get your push rods out of place, not actually get them seated in the lifters, et cetera, et cetera. That's something I always see people do all the time. So double check that, spin the engine over, make sure you see all your rockers actuating like they should before you put your valve cover back on. Now, if you're doing this project at home and you've never done it before, I would give yourself at least four hours to do the job to do all of them on both sides. This took me about an hour to do both sides, but clearly I have much better access than you'll have, and I've done it quite a few times myself. So again, at least a four hour job if you're doing it yourself. Give yourself the time to actually do it correctly. This is, you really don't wanna make a mistake while you're doing this that could lead to a problem down the road. All right, let's get this thing all the way back together. Now you saw me tighten down these coils here with my little electric impact here. That's not really something I recommend. These brass inserts in these valve covers can strip very, very easily. Uh, I recommend doing these by hand. I've just, I've done it so many hundreds of times that I know exactly how little pressure I can apply with my electric impact to tighten these things down. They're good to go. They do not need to be tight at all because they're not good, just, they're not just going to rattle loose on their own and come flying off of there. So they don't need very much pressure at all. So there it is guys, that is how you replace the valve springs on a Hemi engine. You can see that it's a fairly straightforward process, not too detailed. You can definitely accomplish it maybe a long afternoon or on the weekend. And that really gives you that peace of mind, that confidence in knowing that your valve train can now support whatever camshaft you throw at this thing. Now, if you're new to this channel, you're wondering, what is this Hemi engine doing in this truck? This is the 1986 Chevy C10 truck. Well. I'll go ahead and link the playlist up here, but this is a truck I'm building for Rocky Mountain Race Week here in about another month. Still trying to get there. We're, we're making some really good progress, but if you want to see more on that, definitely stay with the channel, and we'll see you next time on Reignited.